So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to get better precision out of your 1x30s, especially if you're using multiple 1x30s. Now, one thing that I've been doing recently to mine is working on the angle guide. And this is interesting. Someone told me the other day they, they called this a a buckle guide. I thought that was kind of appropriate because it is kind of a little bit like a belt buckle. I can kind of see that. I never heard this referred to as a buckle, but um, I, I like that. I like the buckle guide. But um, so this is how these come. And, and what's the downfall of this? It, you know, is it good? There's a couple problems with this. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to show you the first problem is these angle marks on it. I don't find to be very accurate and there's different manufacturers out there sometimes I see like you can see this one I have over here it's a real light colored aluminum this one's a gold uh, kind of brassy looking one but my biggest concern with these is that the angle is just not correct so what I like to do is I like to use an angle cube to set my angle guides so the first thing you want to do is zero it out on the belt so I'm up against the the platen here in the back and this is an interesting instrument what it will tell you is um, so I'm gonna just put it on this table here for a second so we put it on the table and what it's telling me there is that it's a point about 0.1 off of being perfectly level. And it's actually telling me that it needs to come up a tiny bit. So if this was to come up just a tiny, tiny little bit, it would be at zero. But that's really, really close to zero. You know, at 0.05, I'm not really that concerned about the hundredths as I would be the tenths. But to set this your angle guide to use it to set your angle properly on here what you want to do is you want to go up against the platen or the or the, where the belt's running straight which should be your zero and then you can re-zero this so that it thinks that is the zero so you hold in the zero button and for a couple seconds and it'll start to flash and then it's going to re-zero it's going to make that zero and there it goes okay and it's still showing us also that it's a 0.05 so it's a tiny it needs to come up a tiny little bit to be perfectly at zero and i like i said i'm not that concerned about the hundredths the tenths is what concerns me so now that i have it zeroed on the belt i can come down here and go on my angle part and see what that's reading and that's reading currently 16.25. Now let's see what the angle on the angle guide says. You can see it's actually at its lowest setting of 10 degrees. And that is not 10 degrees. So I use, I pay no attention to the marks on these angle guides. I use the angle cube to set this as close as I can to the same number on each one of my machines. And typically, this one's off a little bit. I usually shoot for 17 degrees. So I would work this until I can get it as close to 17 degrees. You know, and, it, and if I'm like at 16.99 or 95, I'm good with that. I just want it as close as I can get it. It doesn't have to be perfectly 17.00. If it's a 17.02, I'm not, I'm not going to worry that much about the hundredths, just the tenths. Now, what's another thing that you can do to get more accuracy out of these 1x30s? Well, you can make modifications to these buckle angle guides. Now... What I did with mine, and I'll show you here, is I cut away this entire side and only left the down, this right across the bottom here. And this thing is plenty strong, okay? So you can cut away this whole section, and it's always best when you're grinding on a 1x30. If you can have your uh, 
knife guide, your angle guide, the same as your belt. It's really nice, and I'll show you why. Let me grab a kitchen knife here. All right. So here's a pretty uh, typical uh, Zwillings kitchen knife. And let me show you what happens. I got one down here set up to show you. So here's one that is not modified. It doesn't have the section cut away. And look what happens when I would try and sharpen this. My bolster is hitting the curved part here. Now, when I'm sharpening this side, look at that. I can go all the way up to where I need to and I'm touching that belt. Perfect. But on this side, I hit. Now, what does that cause? Well, you're either going to have to pick up and come up here and, and freehand it, which is never, you know, for some people, not great. Um, and it actually looks different. If you're going against the platen or if you're having to freehand it a little bit. Because once you start freehanding, especially if you're not against the platen, then you're also getting a convex grind. So what I like to do is I like to modify this even more by cutting away that outside edge. So you can see on this one, this is perfect same size as the belt. And look what happens. When I come to this side, I can grind all the way down to where I need to without running into that bolster. So you can take away a good portion of this and not have to worry about it. Now, what else do I do? I also grind these out so I can get the belt really, really close. Now let me show you how close mine is. And, and this is also, a lot of guys uh, are afraid of edge leading grinding. They only wanna do edge trailing because they're afraid the belt's gonna catch it. And, and pull them in or grab their finger and stuff. But if you make the adjustments and grind away on these holes so that you can get the, this part of the angle guide closer to your belt, you won't ever, you won't slip in. Your knife won't, won't slip into that, that big gap, even if you're doing little tiny knives. So that will give you much more precision. Okay, so here you can see how much I ground <clears throat> out of the uh, top hole and I also ground the uh, bottom one also and I kind of rounded that off up top and that is what gives me the ability to get this angle guide so close to that belt so I want it as close as I can get it without touching but not having a big giant gap in there. And every one of these I have ever ordered has had way too big of a gap for what I like, for uh, how close I want my belt and my angle guide. So I uh, cut mine with a rigid tool for cutting off uh, metal parts. This little thing's great. And I just simply Go right down, I drew a line with my uh, Sharpie marker. And then the last time I did one, it was literally burning hot. Oh yeah, so I'm glad I got gloves on. I could feel it coming through the gloves. It's quite hot. So yeah, ooh, look at that. So just be aware of that. It's going to heat up if you're using the kind of cutting tool I'm using to cut this. But that's it. Just simply let it cool off. And now I'm going to do my other cut right down this side. And I actually might... Uh, Go off my line. My my drawn in line here is not perfect. It's not super straight. I 
and that's good. Good enough cut there. All right, so now I just have this last little cut to make there, and then uh, I, I finished it off by um, usually by using a Dremel tool on it and, and getting in there with some uh, finer stones and just, just cleaning it up and making it nice and smooth. I don't want to go too far though. I don't want to hurt the integrity of the uh, buckle. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to grab me a pair of flyers. And I think I can work this piece right off. Let's see. Little piece. All right, and there we go. So there's our rough cut. And now we can actually clean this up on our on our 1x30. So I'll come over here to a 1x30. You could grind the uh, very tip down if you really want to be able to get it super close, which uh, can be nice. I'm going to do that on, on this right here on the uh, Kubitron belt and the platen. And I'll show you that. Gonna, take a little bit off. And that looks pretty good. Almost went a little too deep there. And I did that one uh, cut there. I'm glad I stopped when I did. All right. But that looks good. Okay, so now I got that all smoothed out like I like. I got my little bit of an angle there so I can get the belt nice and close. I'm going to reassemble the piece. There's that. It's on there. Let's check it with the belt. And that looks good. It's pretty well lined up. Let's see how close we can get it. We can get it nice and close. Now it does need a slight bend. Just like my other one I noticed when I first got it. It was a little bit bent too much to one direction. And I know this can be more perfectly even with the belt. If I just give this a tiny bit of bend. Not much, and I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on it. Because I don't want to snap it. But yeah, that's better right there. Yep, that's much more even. Let's check our angle. Zero. All right, let's come on down. 14's a little low. We're shooting for 17. And I just, this is where I just make adjustments until I get it. 17.05, right there. So if I can tighten this, 17.05, that's good. Sometimes I'll get in there with a pliers and give it a nice little, just a little crank so it really stays. And there we are still 17.05. So that is exactly how I want that belt, how I want this angle guide. It's nice and close to the my belt. Now if I have a knife with a bolster you can see I can get right up against, let me not block the camera, you can see I right there I'm right all the way up against that belt. And that's what I do. Last thing that I do, like I said before, is just adding a piece of green frog tape. I like it straight as I can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but I do like it pretty darn straight. And all the way up to the top, if I can. And 
And what I'll do is I'll just come here and cut it. And that's good. And that is done. And the last thing I'm going to show you to make grinding on the 1x30, and I actually do this to my 2x42 easier, is this green tape. And this green tape is called frog tape. And it's a painter's tape. But for some reason, frog tape is like one of the best painter's tapes. And what I have found is compared to 3M uh, blue tape, which I also use usually for tape, taping up knives and for uh, when I'm working on handles and things, the green frog tape is super smooth and slick and knives slide beautifully across it. For whatever reason, the blue tape is more grippy. And you, I mean, you can even rub your finger against the two and totally feel the difference. And even, let's see if it'll focus well. You can almost see the little ridges. They're, they both have ridges in them, but the blue tape has bigger ridges. And it's just not as smooth and slick as the frog tape. So I don't use the blue tape on these anymore. For a couple reasons one i found the blue tape wore away quicker and then some glue would be exposed and you can tell when the glue starts coming through because it starts grabbing everything the green frog tape lasts longer doesn't wear away as quick but it's also super slick and it's really nice for sliding a metal knife across protecting the knife but giving you that nice smooth surface to slide across and those are my tips for getting more precision out of your one by 30. So I hope everyone enjoyed these tips for getting precision out of your one by 30. I will leave as many links as possible in the description of this video for all the products and things that you saw in this video.